Sims here, and I follow your Detroit Lions group. Here's a little taste of what we have to offer. Billy Sims knows barbecue, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs. Okay, how? We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Where? Wherever you want. Online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. Thank you for your support. We love being a part of your community. We'll see you soon. Hey, what's up? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Rocked On Podcast Network, your dedicated media source for the latest in sports news, live shows, and podcasts, where we are driven by rockedon.com. Hey, did you know that you can get in the end zone every single day with daily content and featured articles just by visiting Rocked On Sports Journal at rockedon.com forward slash journal? All right, Andy having a little technical difficulty th- tonight, but now that we've gotten that out of the way, why don't you tell them what's on deck for tonight's show? Thank you, Will. Well, tonight, everyone's episode number 13 of Off the Cuff. We're diving back into our segment called Lions Legends, where we discuss the Lions history and the players that have dominated the gridiron. And on deck tonight, we have Chris Spielman and Jason Hansen, only on Rock On Detroit Lions podcast. So tonight, Will, I wanted to start I want to start with Jason Hansen. Um, as we know, Jason Hansen has spent his whole entire career with the Lions, um, goes down as one of the best kickers to ever play the game. Uh, he was drafted by the Lions in the second round of 92. He didn't take him long at all to establish himself as one of the top kickers in the league. And he immediately earned himself a starting role and became a dominant force with the Lions with the special teams unit. And after 21 seasons, he is the team's all-time leading scorer and the NFL's all-time leader in games played. No one ever came close to him in that. That's I mean, that's a long, long career. I mean, he spent all 21 of his seasons with the Lions, and that record still holds to this day amongst players who stay with one team. I can't I can't really think of any player that stayed with a team for pretty much the whole career, maybe aside from Aaron Rodgers, possibly. But um <clears throat> Tom and he has Oh, Tom Brady, yeah, he did stay with the Patriots. You're right. <laughs> I mean, he, he only ventured off for three seasons, but uh, yeah, I mean, he was with he was with the Patriots forever. Yeah, he was since oh 2001, I believe. Yeah, until he went to Tampa Bay. That's right. Um, but he did cement himself. I mean, he's one of the greatest kickers of all time, and I know us Lions fans, we loved him. His team loved him. Um, Two thousand one hundred fifty points that he scored. It's fourth all time in NFL history. And that's the most points ever scored as a Lions player. I mean, Will, a kicker, having the most points is a, is a <laughs> that's craziness. But then again, maybe it's also the bad luck of our team, too. I don't know. Um, I know right now he's on the ballot for the 2023 Hall of Fame. There's no reason why that number four shouldn't have a gold jacket around his shoulders. And um, he's a deadly accurate kicker. He was a deadly accurate kicker. And he gained recognition from his fans. And the NFL is one of the most accurate kickers of all time. He was selected to three Pro Bowls. and was named the NFC Special Teams Player of the Year in 91. And then he was also named to the NFL All-Decade Team for the 2000s. And he was inducted into the Lions Hall of Fame in 2016. I mean, from what I remember as a Lions fan, you know, he was always an exciting kicker to watch. I always knew that whenever he went up there, let's just call it what it is, nine times out of ten, I knew he was going to sink whatever field goal he was kicking. So <clears throat> that's my introduction to Jason. What do you got on Mr. Hanson, Will? Well, I mean, you you kind of unpacked a lot there. Um, I'll say this first. Jason Hanson was our – how do you put it? I mean, he was like our, our, our rescue, you know. I mean, the Lions oftentimes would be in a position where – a field goal would win the game, you know, or it would tie the game or all we would get is field goals during the game. So he was our, uh, he was our utility man. I mean, he did everything for us. Uh, Even though he was just a kicker, he kept us in the games. He kept the games close. He was consistent. He was, you know, Mr. Automatic. He, uh, you know, was the guy you could count on in the final seconds. There was no, there was no kick that was too big. There was no kick that, that had too much pressure for Jason Hansen. He was always cool as a cucumber, 
you know, in an ice bath. I mean, the guy, the guy just did it and, and he did it with grace and he did it with humility uh, and consistency that I don't think has really ever been seen in the league. I mean, there's, there's not many kickers that have been able to do what that man did. And I think you are right about one thing for sure. Excuse me. And that's, uh, he definitely deserves a gold jacket. I mean, you don't see many kickers get a gold jacket, right? No. And no. there has to be a, a very special person, you know, to get one. And, and he's definitely one. Even if I wasn't a Lions fan, I would tell you without a doubt that, that Jason Hansen deserves the gold jacket. Um, and I think he'll get it. So we'll find out, you know, here pretty soon. But uh, wind it back to his college years a little bit. Did you know that he had the, um, well, I guess he had the honor of playing with Drew Bledsoe back at, uh, was it Washington State? Yeah, it was uh, Washington, yeah. And back at Washington, he, uh, well, as a sophomore anyway, he was about 57% on his kicks. And, and I mean, those were numbers that were just not seen before at any rank. Um, but that was from 50 yards and out 57.1%. And it was a PAC 12 record that stood for decades. And it's a lot of the reason why, you know, Hanson was taken where he was in the NFL draft because he was such an accurate kicker and he could kick, you know, from distance. Um, he set numerous other records. Uh, while in school, while at college, uh, at Washington state. Uh, but he, he left with 328 points scored, the longest field goal uh, converted at 62 yards, and 20 games with at least two successful field goals and 63 total field goals made and 139 extra point uh, kicks made. So he didn't just do it in the NFL. He did it at the college ranks. He did it at the high school ranks. But there's a funny misnomer about Jason Hansen that I don't think many people know. He was actually a better punter than he was a field goal or an extra point kicker. So could you imagine if he was selected as a punter or if he was needed to punt? You know, he, he would have been deadly accurate there too. Oh, geez. Um, so it's just one of those things where he had two choices. You know, he could continue being a kicker or he could, you know, become a punter. And obviously he made the right choice. So – Excuse me, I'm having some throat issues again tonight. Um, you know, he was drafted. Uh, let's see, where was he drafted? It was what, 91, 92? 92, second round. Second round. I mean, when's the last time you, you've you heard of a kicker being drafted in the second round? Uh, Jake Moody of U of M in this, uh, this draft this year, 2023, I think he was taken in the fourth or fifth round, which is extremely yes. high to take a kicker. Um, I guess I wouldn't even waste a fifth round pick on a kicker, but uh, you know, I would look to take somebody, you know, maybe in the seventh round, I'd be okay with that if I were a GM. Right. But I'm not. So obviously someone thinks that Jake Moody is the, the best thing since sliced bread. And I can tell you this, it's not going to pan out. And, and I know it's not. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because taking a kicker that high, they've got to have something that's that makes them special. And if you were to compare his numbers to somebody like Hanson in school, they're, they're not even comparable. And when I look at taking a kicker that high, you're going to want somebody that you know that can go in and bang it from 50 yards and out, 55 57, 59 without batting an eye and have some confidence and consistency. And when I compared Moody's numbers to Badgley's numbers, you know, from last season, they're almost identical. Right. So why, why would you take a guy, you know, that high if there's a guy in the NFL that's not even doing that well, right? He's not consistent. He's not trusted over 50 yards and you just drafted a guy in the fourth round. So it, what I, I guess where I'm bringing this to is it took a lot of balls for the Detroit Lions to take Hanson in the second round. And when you know, you know. And the Lions knew that there was something special about, about Jason Hanson. Um, so that's all I really had, you know, a little bit about his college life and his marksmanship, you know, as a kicker. But the funny thing about him being a punter too, I mean, I don't remember too many games where he had to fill in as a punter, but I'm sure there was a few. 
Well, actually, Will, just for fun, pop quiz. Uh, do you remember what his longest field goal was in the NFL while playing for the Lions? I know you said 62 yards as a college kicker, but. Yeah, no, I think it was 64. No, actually, his longest field goal in the NFL was only 56 yards. Hanson? Yeah. No. That's what I, I looked it up. That's the numbers I have in front of me. There's no yards. way. I think he kicked a 64 yarder. And you know what? I, you might make a liar out of me, Will. I, and maybe you are, but I can tell you right now from what I saw, I, you know what? I, all right, we're going to – anyone who's watching, we apologize. we got to do this real quick because I, I could be wrong on my stats here. I, I could have sworn that he hit a 64-yard. Maybe it is 56. Well, I just got to see. Uh, come on. Let's oh, I, you know what? I think I'm thinking of Matt Prater. Yeah, that was Prater who kicked 64. Yeah, that was Prater, not Hanson. Not Hanson. I'm, w- I'm glad you didn't bet me any money on that one. Well, you know, the funny thing is, though, is how many kicks, though, did Hanson kick between 50 and 56, though? That's that's the real question. That would be the real question. I mean, because that that's that's where it gets interesting. And yeah, it was. So it was Matt Prater that set the Lions record. Um, I remember that game, too. That was a good one. I think it was 2016. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, I know. um I know one thing, Jason Hansen. I know as of right now, he still calls Detroit home. He still lives in the Detroit area um, with his wife, and he's got three kids. And I guess now uh, his life outside of uh, football. Now I guess he's a he's an avid golfer. I guess that's what he likes to do in his. Uh, he looks like a golfer. He does. He does. <laughs> he's kind of got the look. Um, yeah, but Jason Hansen, you know, to me, another one of those great Lions players that we had. Um, just. He was very likable. I actually just read something about a minute ago that said that uh, Barry Sanders is one of his favorite players to ever be with. He said Barry was the greatest, great teammate, unique in every way. And um, I got to bring this up because um, I guess somebody in the article I read said that Jason was very much like Barry. And I guess Jason rebuttaled and said, no, there's no one like Barry. I'm not like Barry. And uh, that makes me laugh because I've, I've brought this up a few times. Will, I think you and I have talked about this and – I've griped about it with you. I had friends of mine who were Cowboy fans telling me that Ezekiel Elliott was just like Barry, and I'm going, no, not even close. What, retired? Prematurely, even earlier than Barry. Exactly. <laughs> even early, because yeah. Ezekiel, Ezekiel is not is not anything close to Barry, never will be, uh, oh God, never no. has been. I mean, no. uh, yeah. I mean, he, he's, yeah. And I'm not yeah, even he- going to get into that argument. No, oh, no, no, and, and that's my point is that I never will either. I just – it was just funny when I read that and Jason basically said that I'm never – no one's like Barry. I just think of all those people that try to ca- compare Elliot, and I'm going, no, there, no, there's no comparison. Don't even try that with me. Um, well, it's it's funny you bring up – well, not funny, but, I mean, it just kind of resonates with, with Jason calling Detroit home because he is and, and has been very active with his philanthropic um, – well, I guess he's been very motivated with with philanthropy uh, he, during his time as a lion, and and even after, uh, even as uh, as recent as 2017, he partnered up with Ally. Uh, I think it's Allied Banking or Financial Services to, and they teamed up with Big Brothers and, and Big Sisters of the Metropolitan Detroit area to bring 50 local kids the opportunity to play at Ford Field on a Saturday, and. Uh, you know, to me, it just speaks volumes that even after football, he still thinks about giving back and he gives back to the Detroit metropolitan area and, and, you know, giving kids an opportunity to do things that they would have never been able to do before and opening their eyes to the generosity that exists in this world. It's a vicious world right now. And, being able to to work with children or to have an opportunity to open someone's eyes, give them a little bit of a glimmer of hope is everything that our country needs today. And and I won't go off into why, but um, these players mean a lot to a lot of people and they don't know it. And they'll never know it until they take the opportunity to give back. And that's why a lot of what the NFL promotes is getting these players into a position to do some things that are meaningful to them and their family and their roots, but also to the city that they're in 
And, and I think that's just a fantastic way that the NFL has been able to, to really promote um, the kindness and, and, and the, the generosity that these good humans carry with them every single day when they're not beating the crap out of each other on the football field. They're a totally different person. And so I think it's great that Jason is, is still staying involved in these things today. And, uh, and, and it's, it's awesome that he stayed home in, in Michigan. Um, I wouldn't, but you know, that's what he chose to do. I, I'd prefer a little bit warmer weather, but you know, he has the opportunity I'm sure to travel wherever he wants, but uh, so kudos to Jason for staying active and, and, and getting involved with such good companies out there and, and organizations to, uh, to give these kids some hope because that's what really matters. Well, Jason, you know, from Will and I, we salute you. Thank you for being a lion. You gave us a lot of good times, a lot of good kicks on the field, a lot of points too, no doubt about that, the most actually. And, um, you know, you're a great Lions legend, and thanks for being active in the community. And, uh, Will, um, <clears throat> everybody have to excuse me too. I'm having issues with my throat as well, so we're kind of having some issues tonight, but we're, we're trying to trudge through it for everyone. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, Will. Bear with me, too, buddy. My voice is shot today. Um, so I'd like to move over, Will, if you're good. I'd like to move over to Chris Spielman, um, another great legend, Lions legend. Um, we, As we all know, Chris Spielman is currently in a front office role with the Lions. Um, but if we step back, that's that's Chris Spielman that a lot of the newer fan base and, you know, fans of the team know him as. But if we look back, he um, – was probably one of the most hardest hitting and feared linebackers um, that we've had as a Lions player and ever known to other teams and other players as well. He just, he had a very hard hitting, hard no style. He was relentless with the way he pursued the ball. He never gave up. Um, and that's just a little quick overview, but Spielman was drafted kind of like Hanson. He was another second round pick of the 1988 draft. And he quickly, came in and established himself as one of the top linebackers and he became a key player in the Lions defense. And as I said, very, very well known for his hard hitting style of play. Uh, he, when I watched him and I was really young, but he never gave up on that ball. He was going for that ball. He was going to get it or he was going to die trying. That's just the kind of, that's the drive he had as a defensive linebacker. A lot of that time you don't see that it seems like now, but he really had that drive. Uh, he spent his first eight seasons in the league with our Lions, and then he did go to the Bills and the Browns for the finishing latter part of his of his career. But most of his time was spent with the Lions, and he did have some he had some great stats, and they were absolutely amazing. Um, he had he recorded over thousand sacks or a thousand tackles, twenty sacks, six interceptions, three forced fumbles. Uh, he and one thing I remember I loved about him, and it's something you, you just don't see it anymore with these athletes because let's call it for what it is. These athletes now they're babied a lot. Uh, Spielman played through injury a lot. And he, if he was hurt, you'd see him on the side. He almost kind of like had the hockey player mentality sometimes, you know, he'd get off the field and as long as he knew he was still mobile, he was getting back out there. That, that's a dying breed now. Um, you know, Will, I know you know this, but I mean, these players now, they so much as get a small little injury and they're out for, I mean, who knows how long, you know, some injuries I know people make fun of and say, oh, how could you be out for that long? But some of them are pretty severe. But Spielman didn't care. I mean, he sacrificed his body. He wanted to be out there playing. And, um, you know, he uh, he was one of the greatest linebackers I've seen since I've watched football. One of the best I've seen in a Detroit Lions jersey. He, uh, he was just another one of those one-of-a-kind players. One of those players that even looking back, I miss seeing him on the field. He was – unbelievable to say the least um you know will i'd like to i'd like to pass it over to you any thoughts and you know facts you might have about mr spielman from our lions of yay day well i can tell you from a personal standpoint uh you know going to as many lions games as as i have gone to ever since i was four years old um i had the the you know pleasure of being able to watch chris spielman and uh and, and he was somebody that you, you wanted to go to the game just to watch. It's somebody that made the game interesting. And, and you're right about one thing. He played through injury. It was a different era, different time in football, where 
I'll challenge you this season to when you're watching an NFL game, pay close attention to how much blood you see on players. Now, I'm not saying they need to bleed to win, okay? But then go back and watch some NFL films from 20 plus years ago during the Chris Spielman era, and you'll see blood all over the place. And that's because these guys gave everything. Now, I'm not saying it was the smartest thing in the world, uh, you know, because there's a lot of injuries that, you know, these players are living with lifelong now. And there's been a lot more research that's been done about these types of injuries and uh, the impact and, and what it does to your body. So they're playing smarter now. Uh, they've removed a lot of the violence from the game. Whereas back then it was a pretty violent game and Chris Spielman brought the violence, but he is a very caring individual, very loving individual. He, he's, you know, uh, he's a good human deep down, but you, you take that human and put him on a football field and he's a totally different animal. And, and that's what the Lions loved about him is he's going to give you everything you need off the field and he's going to give you everything you want on the field. And he left it on the field um, each and every play, each and every game, every single season. Uh, he just he did it and he, and he did it for all the right reasons. Um, but when I speak to to Spielman about today, um, it's, it's interesting to see how his his life is kind of i guess it's progressed a little bit into a cushy you know fox job where he was doing some announcing or you know color analyst and and it was a very cushy job for him and he's transitioned now to going back to football you know away from the booth and into that front office role where he is uh well i guess he's kind of the glorified assistant to rod wood and one of the first things that Sheila Hamp wanted to do when she took the reins of this team was find the people that she knew that she could trust, find the people that she knew that knew what Detroit football was all about. And one of the first names on that list was Chris Spielman. And when she was able to pull him back and, and back into Allen Park, back into Detroit, you know, Lions football organization, she knew that she had somebody that she could trust to help lead and direct all of the things that, that they may not see and bring all of these things to light uh, that they may not see. And that's what he's been really good at is, is finding those nuances within the game and, and within the team and, and the needs of the team and bringing that to light. Case in point is he was very integral in bringing Brad Holmes to this team. He was very integral in bringing Dan Campbell to this team. Without Chris Spielman, we may not have Brad Holmes and, and Dan Campbell as our head coach and general manager right now. Absolutely not. So it, it's very vital when I tell you that, that his role is so important and, and it became more important. I mean, it's, it's just, it's grown since he's been there. Uh, but one of the first orders of business, uh, you know, when, whenever you begin your search for leadership is you bring in leadership. And Chris Spielman just exudes that. He, he did it on the field for, gosh, I don't know how many years he played. And he's been doing it ever since he's been off the field. Um, not just in football, but he, he's also involved in, you know, some other things off the field as well that, you know, with his philanthropy and charities and, and things of that nature. We'll, we'll get into that in just a few minutes. But um I have to say that, you know, with his his role, uh, you know, as the special assistant to Rod Wood, um, it's so important to really give thanks to everybody in the back. And, and I wrote an article, and if you go visit rockdownpodcastnetwork.com, uh, I wrote an article called The Men and the Women Behind the Curtain of the Detroit Lions. And it really speaks volumes to who these people are that are behind the curtain. And, you know, it's kind of a play on the wizard of Oz in my opinion, right? That, you know, there's, there's someone behind the curtain that's pulling the strings and, and there's more to it that you're, you're never going to see. So the people like uh, Mike Disner and Sheila Hamp and Chris Spielman, uh, you know, you got Brad Holmes, Rod Wood, uh, you've, you've got all of these key pieces, um, Barry Sanders as a brand ambassador. Now we have Calvin Johnson back. We have Dan Campbell as the head coach. You've got all these key pieces in Detroit 
that are putting together a phenomenal product on the field. And Chris Bielman is a very key, you know, component to this, this pie, if you will. Um, and, and it's working. So his position, you know, uh, with this front office is it's kind of uh, incredible to see what it's turned into and how well it's working and how much fun this guy's having because right. he's really just having a ton of fun. Whenever you see Chris Bielman, you know, my hat's off to him for, for, uh, for speaking out about the crowd that booed Sheila Hamp about a year ago. Um, I can't remember what it was for, but you know, that's what, that's what he brings to Detroit. You're not going to disrespect the ownership. You're not going to disrespect the team. This is a new team. This is an, a new vision and, and he's part of it. And uh, so my hat's off to him for doing that kind of stuff for, for sticking up for, you know, for the people that need it and deserve it. Uh, he's a brilliant business person. Uh, he's, he's a brilliant leader. Uh, his aptitude is is far and away beyond what anybody ever thought it would be in business, and uh, he's just a perfect culture fit for this for this organization. But with all that, I'll I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, yeah actually, I just want <clears throat> to I want to touch on that what you just said the the game that the fans booed Sheila Hamp at that was that was the game where she was welcoming Calvin Johnson back to the organization because you remember Calvin Johnson and the organization had their splitting and falling out. And I remember that was when they, you know, made amends and, and whatnot. And, you know, he came back into the fold, but that was also when they were really struggling and things were going South real quick with the team still. So I think that's why they boot. That is why they boot her even with Calvin Johnson being there, but I, I got to give Chris Spielman on, you know, credit on that. Cause that was, you know, stick up for your owner, the owners, excuse me, owners doing the best she can with what she's been left. Uh, I don't know if you remember this one, Will, but I know, um, you know, as you said, Sheila really, really had to motivate, you know, motivate Spielman to come back. You know, I can remember um, one of the quotes that that Chris came out and said was, you know, I have a vision that matches exactly what Rod Wood and Sheila Ford Hamp envision, and that's the only way this is going to work because we're completely in sync of the direction of the culture of the building. And uh, everybody understands the rules of playing in the NFL. It's all about winning games and losing games. I think the fans should look for somebody that, that that's what the rules are. We have to be able to find that and identify that gives us the best chance to win games. You know, I think that's, I think that speaks volumes about, about the direction that he saw that Rod Wood and, and uh, Sheila were taking the team. I think that speaks volumes about the direction he went. I mean, Hey, you know, you shared that video with me that I saw. I think you had posted it or somebody put it up there when um, Spielman and Calvin Johnson welcomed Jack Campbell and Jameer Biggs to Allen Park. Uh, Biggs. Gibbs. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I caught myself there. Sorry. Jameer Gibbs. Sorry. I've actually been doing that a lot with his name. He's going to be big this year, so that's all right. We'll call him Biggs yeah. later on. Maybe that'll eventually be his nickname, but I got to get that right, so apologies. Um, but – yeah, I remember during that video we saw uh, Jack Campbell rode with Chris Spielman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Spielman was very, you know, he he put it up there. He showed the shirt. He said, grit, you know, this is what, this is our culture now. You know, you're the, he let Jack Campbell know you're the luckiest guy in the world. You're going to achieve your dream. It's going to be, it's going to be great. You know, um, these are the things that, that he's getting this team excited for. And we as fans should be excited for, because we have never had this, Will. I can tell you right now as a fan, I've never had a front office that made it look this good. And I really believe Chris Spielman, he's a he's a perfect piece of this puzzle to, to get us going for the upcoming future for not just his fans, but these players. He's he's bringing a culture now because, Will, you remember there's probably only five years ago, free agents, they would never want to come and play to Detroit, the Lions, knowing what went on here. Now no, Chris we're, Spielman, we're still on the verge. Yeah, we're, we're still on the verge where – we're just now starting to kind of crack that, you know. Well, and that's the, the, and that's the free what I mean. agency. Well, and that's what I mean. But I think a lot of that credit goes to Spielman and and Sheila and, and Brad Holmes and what Dan Campbell are doing. I think they're finally. I think Spielman's a big uh, one of the big architects of that. I think he's one of the ones who's waking people up and saying this is a good place to come and play. Now they have a culture. I mean, we got Cam Sutton. We got guys like that, but. You know, before I go too off track now, I apologize. But this is just the things I see with Spielman that's making him, you know, just 
the type of guy he is, the NFL recognizes it. Everybody recognizes it. Uh, I'm really excited that he's doing what he's doing now in this front office role. So to me, I compare it to when he was a player. You know, it was exciting to watch him play, and it's exciting to see what he's doing in the business aspect of it also. It's it's almost as if he brought his hard style of football play, in a, in a weird analogy, he brought that into the front office role. You know, again, that video, he was excited to say, hey, I might be head of this team, but you're going to come here and you're going to learn the culture. You're going to have fun and it's going to be great. And that's exactly the type of energy he brings. I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see that we have that kind of personality, you know, on this team now. So, well, leadership breeds leadership. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, Dan and, and Brad speak to it often that they're going to surround themselves and these players with the people that they want and the people that deserve to be there to learn about this culture, to be part of this culture. And when you bring somebody in that is already in, uh, it has been a leader is used to the leadership role. Sometimes it's, it's a little difficult to put a bunch of leaders into, you know, one pod, if you will, right. Who's going to lead. Right. Because they're all fighting for it. Their egos are too high. You think that it just doesn't fit. It doesn't work. Right. You got too many egomaniacs in one room. Nothing gets done. People fight. People argue. It turns into sour grapes. For whatever reason, that's not happening in Detroit. They're bringing these leaders in that are working together. And Tracy Walker said it best when he said, someone asked him about, so you've got Cam Sutton and CJ Gardner Johnson and, and Mosley now in your room. Who's the leader? Who's the alpha dog? And Tracy Walker says, nobody. We see each other as equals. We're all exactly. sitting here trying to learn from each other. Hell, Brian Branch is a rookie and he might be telling me something about my back pedal, you know, or, or Cam, Cam could be telling me something. You know what I mean? So yeah. when you hear that from the players, and I know sometimes it's coach speak, you know, player speak, it's PR speak, but I didn't get that from Tracy Walker. What I got is this team is about leadership and everybody becoming a leader in their own way. And no matter what, you do have to lead yourself first and foremost. Right. So by leading yourself, you're able to lead others. And bringing in a guy like Chris Spielman, who's a bona fide leader in every sense of the word, is going to rub off on everybody else. And you bring in a guy like Dan Campbell, who definitely is a leader. Brad Holmes, who's a leader. Sheila Hamp is a leader. Mike Disner is a They're all leaders. And yes. then the players they bring in are all leaders, too. And that's what this team is being built on, is leadership and, and, and brotherhood. And uh, it's exciting. It, it is exciting. And it's unique. And you're right about one thing. We've never seen it before. And the Lions are being smart with social media. They're being creative with the social media and using it to their advantage. Um, they're not overdoing it. They're just doing enough to show us kind of what's really going on and, and the, the good side. Um, before we get any further here, uh, again, please check out rockdownpodcastnetwork.com. Uh, visit the blog site that's up right now. Uh, we're sorry it's been a, a long delay in getting the rest of the site up. Uh, I hope our guy uh, gets it done soon uh, yes. because it's definitely uh, way, way behind. Um, we did have a couple of chats here from Maleficent uh, saying that Hanson was money during our, our uh, opening there and uh, that you guys are right on uh, about Hanson. So, yeah, appreciate the comment there, um, Maleficent. And um, don't be afraid to come back next week, everybody, because next week we're going to get back to – regular off the cuff stuff and and it's kind of a bad time because we're going right into the lull again but we've been doing some lions legends where we wanted to discuss a little bit about the lions history to give everybody a taste of the past and and it can get a little boring at times um because it's just history but there's a lot of good information in here and and to teach you know the the new lions fans because there's going to be a lot of them the bandwagons filling up Every single day. So they're going to need to learn. And we're going to learn you. And we're going to keep doing it. 
Uh, but we're going to do it in, in, in parts. So we'll bring it back here or there because we've got some great ones still to talk about, like, you know, Calvin Johnson, of course, who's a Hall of Famer, um, you know, Lem Barney. There, there's plenty, uh, plenty of Alex Karras. There's plenty of players still to discuss. Um, but go visit the site. Go visit all the Facebooks. Join the YouTube. Find us at uh, Rockdown Podcast Network. Uh, find us at Rockdown Podcast Network or at Get Rockdown on Twitter. Uh, please give us a like, share, and a subscribe. And eventually when we have ads, you know, when there's little ads running, just set the phone down. Let it run for five or ten seconds. If you really want to support us and you really want to help us grow and, and, and to be able to give you guys more content and get better with our content, um, just let the ads play. That's how we're able to do things. And uh, it's all new to us, and it's going to take a long time to get anywhere, but um, we're going to keep doing it. We want to do it because we love to do it. Exactly. Um, All right. So back over to you. What you got next for us here on Chris Spielman? I got one other thing on him when when you're done. Well, you know, I kind of wanted to just kind of go over some of the, some of the numbers and some of the things he did, you know, and as a player, because again, like I said, he, as a player, he was just unbelievable to watch. So, one of the awards, a lot of people may not know this one, but he in 1987 was given the Chick Harley Award, which they actually don't even do that award anymore. But it's it's a winner selected by a committee of college football coaches, and it's named after o, o, Ohio State University. I'll be nice and not say anything about OSU in this show. Will, uh, Will knows what I'm talking about. Named after OSU legend Chick Harley. Essentially, it recognizes... It's a touchdown club of Columbus. Actually, it's a it's an award for recognizing a standout player who was in college who's now in the NFL. They actually don't do it anymore. A lot of it was because it was a failure to get the support that it needed to keep doing it. Um, in my opinion, I think that's a shame because I think I think that's a great award to you know for a college to recognize you know a great athlete at the time. But that's just what that is. Um, you know. Some of his, you know, some of his big accomplishments. He was a first team all pro, two time second team all pro, four time pro bowler, 89, 91, 89, 90, 91, and 94. He was on the all rookie team. He's, of course, on the Detroit Lions all time team, 75th anniversary team, two time consensus all American. I mean, the, the word in the list goes on and on. And, <clears throat> you know, and again, just a, just a diehard, just a diehard on the field. And like I said before, I, I really, really do miss seeing him play all the time. And I'm glad he's in our front office now. That's really, Will, all I really have on Mr. Spielman. I just, you know, thinking about his play from back then and, you know, where he progressed and then, you know, taking a time away from football to go into like some broadcasting and whatnot and then be persuaded to come back to us in this type of role. That's the things that, that stand out to me about the man himself as of right now. I'm very happy that he's in this role. And the other reason I'm cutting it semi short is because technical difficulty for me, my throat is killing me tonight. So I apologize for my voice. So that's where I'm at with Chris Spielman, one of our great Lions legends. Will, I'd like to throw it back at you real quick if you have anything else on on Mr. Spielman. Yeah. So, you know, one of the most amazing things that Chris uh, Spielman has done is when they started the um, the Spielman uh, strength and commitment in the uh, hold on a second, I apologize here. Uh, it's the Stephanie Spielman Fund. Okay, it's 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 the Spielman strength and commitment, uh, where his former wife Stephanie uh, passed away from breast cancer in two thousand and nine, and this is something that's hit my home. Uh, more than once and hit my family more than once. Um, so it's something that, you know, it's near and dear to all of our hearts, but especially when it hits home that, you know, it, it hits home. And after reading through, you know, some of what he has been able to accomplish in the honor of his former wife and, and what they've been able to accomplish together has been nothing short of amazing. Uh, this was just a quest to raise $100,000 for breast cancer research. And when you talk about somebody who's a leader and somebody who's 
definitely has a knack for business because when you look at these types of things or you start these types of things, it does require a lot of business acumen. Um, this quest of 100K turned into $15.4 million raised to support vital breast cancer research and patient assistance. And the Stephanie uh, Spielman Fund uh, for Breast Cancer Research is devoted to advancing research in breast cancer. Uh, so if you'd like to donate and help out Chris Spielman and his, his, uh, his fund here and, and, and their fight to end breast cancer, uh, visit the Chris Spielman.com. It's, it's all the charities and all the contact and donate information is there. It's a, it's a, a fantastic way to give back, um, not only to, you know, the community, but, you know, I'm sure everyone's been touched some way or another by cancer and it sucks. I hate cancer. Uh, I've had it personally and, um, and it's hit my home twice in the last year. So, um, this is a good way to give back. It's a good way to get involved. And um, my hat's definitely off for Chris for doing this and utilizing his strength and commitment and his strength and organization and, uh, and doing something that is definitely changing the landscape uh, for breast cancer awareness. So that was the final thing that I had to, to add tonight about Chris. And, and, and I think it's a great way to end with, um, you know, just who he is as a person and why he means so much to not just the city of Detroit, the Detroit Lions, but um, Ohio and, you know, the communities within Ohio and, uh, you know, where he was able to uh, impact so many lives um, throughout his lifetime. And he'll continue to do so. And he's, you know, impacting Lions fans all around the world right now with the way that he's able to help this Lions team put the pieces back together. And, uh, it's a, it's been a, you know, fun watching this formidable bond to get created in Detroit. And uh, I'm excited to see where it goes next because we have an interesting season uh, on the horizon. And it's a season that, it, in my opinion, is either going to be boom or bust. And I don't even like saying that because uh, I just feel like we're not going to have an average season. We're either going to be kicking some tail often or we might be getting our tail kicked often. And I hate that. Um, I hate to even say it, but with the way things are, are getting started, I think that we're starting in the right direction. So that's all I have on Chris. Uh, Chris, thanks a lot for everything you've done, man. Um, you were an awesome, uh, awesome motivator, awesome person to watch on and off the field. Uh, I don't think I ever had the pleasure of meeting Chris ever at, at any time in my hundreds of games that i've been to but right uh would have been an honor to and i'm sure i will at some point i'll get a chance to meet him but um we'll see it's gonna take some navigating but we'll make it happen all right so again thanks for joining uh rocked on podcast network and off the cuff uh i had a i gotta lighten it up a little bit will i had something on my mind i want to bring to your attention and kind of the fan base too. I, I, so, you know, mini camps have started. And as we all know, there was that report that came out that Jared Goff was getting kind of frustrated with uh, J Mo, hmm. you know, not running, not running routes right, kind of just whatever. And I guess he got a little bit on the, I guess some players kind of saw him going like with his hands, like, what are you doing? And I guess apparently they interviewed Dan Campbell about it. You know, and then Campbell kind of alluded to the fact that Ben Johnson had to run out there because what I'm getting at is that a lot of people are still on this train of just Goff's not the man. He's going to be garbage. And you and I have gone back and forth. Goff is our guy, whether people mm -hmm. like it or not. And I'm fine with it. I love the guy. You know, I'm a fan. I'm the biggest Goff fanboy, I think, on the planet. I'll just say it. But my point is, is that the way Goff – had Ben Johnson come in, kind of talk to him and Jameson to kind of ease it. And then you saw Goff go and talk to Jameson. That little thing right there should show people that are hating on Goff that this is his team now. He's he's taking control. He has control of this locker room. Can we just put this to bed about Goff not being the man already? I, I just – it's driving me nuts because it seems like these OTAs and these minicamps now – they're just nothing but flooded with the gambling stuff, which won't go away 
and they're still talking like Hendon Hooker has to come in and take over. What am I missing here, Will? Well, I think what you're missing is a lot of these – I hate to even say this. There's a lot of uneducated football fans, okay? And and look, and I don't mean that in a negative way. But I, yet at the same time, I kind of do. Because if you don't understand this, then you're never going to understand football. There is nothing one in May. There is nothing one in June. There's nothing one in July, but you better get your shit right in July. Okay. So <laughs> golf got his butt kicked in the first day of mandatory mini camp by the defense. That's fantastic. I'm glad he did because yes. that's that our defense is moving in the right direction. Okay. That doesn't mean that golf is going to give up because he came back the second day and he kicked their butt. So exactly. That's what a good leader does. That's what a peer professional does. That's what somebody that has talent does. And if if there's one thing out there that really burns me up more than this, you know, we've got to trade golf or we need Lamar Jackson or Hendon oh, Hooker. I, I, Hendon Hooker can't step in. Okay. He can't. Literally, he can't stop. No, I know. Yeah. yeah that's I'm legitimately here. cannot. Yeah. So he's done. He cannot step on the field till at least November and he's probably going to get parked and he won't be able to play at all this year. So you can throw that baby out with the bathwater. Hennon Hooker's not stepping on the field this 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 season at all, other than for practice, you know, and done, doing whatever he's able to do. Sudfeld is not the answer. And the we're not trading for a high profile, you know, quarterback anytime soon. There's no Who's reason why there? Ben there's no reason why Ben Johnson comes back to just bring in a different quarterback and have to re relearn and reteach everything all over again. That would be taking 15 steps backwards. That would set this team backwards. So it's not going to happen. But the thing that burns me up the most is people say that golf can't throw the deep ball. And I'm oh, so happy. I'm so happy that somebody at uh, NFL.com put out a video that I posted this morning that shown uh, golf last year throwing the deep ball all over the place. And there's some stats and some history from last season that people should go brush up on golf finished in the top three or top four of all statistical categories for the deepest balls thrown completed yak, you name it, all of them. Yeah. So how does a guy that can't throw the deep ball finish in the top three or four categories for 20, 30, 40 and 50 yard completions? Mahomes was like number one. Okay. Allen, I think, was somewhere in there, number two, maybe, number three. But Goff was right there with him, and it really wasn't far behind. No. I think I think I think it was Mahomes that had, you know, he was pretty far and away the better quarterback throwing the ball deep. But that doesn't yeah. mean that Goff doesn't have an arm. He just has a different way of throwing. He has a different throwing style. When you're long and you're tall and you're lanky and you've got long arms, being an educated football fan will tell you this much. The trajectory that he throws the ball, the windup, yes, everything that he does to throw the ball will go at the same speed, distance, and everything else. Yeah, I I just I, I just I just wish it would be put to bed. I don't know what just happened here. I just lost everything. Oh, I, I can still see it in here. Yeah. I, oh, I guess I'm still on camera. Hey, that's great. you're still you're still good, Will. Don't worry. So anyway, the trajectory of of the way that he throws the ball will get the ball down the field at the same speed. It just looks different. It it's not a rifle shot, you know, at a 30 degree pitch. You know, maybe it's a rifle at a 39 degree pitch. Okay, it's like a pitching wedge versus a lob wedge but one's going to get there maybe just a hair sooner, whereas the other one's going to come right in and over your shoulder the way you want it to be. And if you look at some of those passes that he threw and the catches that were made, I mean, they, they don't get any closer. No. He would squeeze those things right between the defender. No one else could have caught that ball but the receiver. So, <laughs> yes, it needs to be put to bed. Look, let Goff go out and have a season. If he goes out and shits the bed this season, yeah. Then Give him, give him some crap back for it. But you know, if he doesn't, I, I hate to say it, 
he's going to get extended. And that's, that's the last thing I'll say. On the extension talk, they're either going to do it before week one or they're not going to do it until the offseason of 2024. So for the people and the other media sources out there that are saying that he's going to get extended if he's playing well during the season, you're wrong. Detroit does not do extensions midseason. Hardly any team does extensions midseason. It's dumb. It detracts away from the player and the team. It's too much noise. It causes too much distraction. It ain't going to happen. So it's either going to happen before week one or after the Super Bowl. So, and it, and it should happen if he plays well. And he should get paid $50 million a year, you know, on a two year extension if he plays well. He will. It's not going to hurt the Lions' budget at all, and they're still going to be able to go out there and get players. If you want to have a good debate and a good conversation, get educated. We spend a lot, and I don't know everything. Andy doesn't know everything. We have a lot to learn ourselves, just like everybody else does. But we take the time to read. We take the time to study. We take the time to watch tape and, and thousands and thousands of hours of tape at that on these players. And, uh, and there's a reason why we write the things we write and say the things we say, it comes from a place of factual, uh, you know, aptitude or factual, um, references, if you will, and our aptitude for understanding what's really going on. We're not always going to be right. No one ever is, but we're trying to bring the truth and the honesty and the transparency back to sports media. And back to the Detroit Lions, who deserve it because everyone's been trashing them forever, rightfully so. But it's time to uh, turn a new leaf. So that's yeah, all I got. For tonight. Yeah, that's it. Well, I just wanted to I just wanted to put that to bed, see what your thoughts were. But uh, I'm good on that, and uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who joined us tonight. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Rocked On Podcast Network and the Rocked On Detroit Lions Off the Cuff episode 13. Will, as pleasure, it's always uh, – sorry. As always, Will, it's a pleasure talking with you and having you on the show, and um, we'll see you guys next week, absolutely. Yeah, it's a pleasure being on my own show. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's why I said it didn't come out right. Sorry. <laughs> Will, I'm very happy you came on your own show today. Isn't that great, everyone? Give him a hand. So, <laughs> so before we go, though, <laughs> villain squad apparel is coming soon uh yes. we started talking about it back in march we started creating designs a few months ago a few months ago and again over the past week so it's gonna hit the website we're gonna have a lot of uh, new custom designs of detroit lions apparel that you're not gonna be able to find anywhere else and if people decide to bite on our name and bite on my styles um just don't um, i'm just gonna warn you now just don't there's a reason why there's a TM with everything. So take the opportunity to visit Villain Squad, you know, apparel once it gets launched on, on the uh, website. Trust me, we'll let everybody know. It's another way for us to support the channels and, and support the content. Uh, we're also going to be launching Turned Up Tailgates this fall, which is a special content series. And it's going to be kind of a, a foodies and football tailgate kind of content that we're going to bring to you guys so um i don't want to say too much more because there's a group out yeah. there that it's constantly trying to steal stuff from us and uh abusing copyright so if they keep doing it we'll out them completely um all right that's all we got for tonight so i appreciate everybody visit rockdownpodcastnetwork.com as usual go lions one pride adios
Billy Sims here, and I follow your Detroit Lions group. Here's a little taste of what we have to offer. Billy Sims knows barbecue, including brisket, chicken, pork, turkey, and ribs. Okay, how? We start early to slow smoke the most delicious meats for over 12 hours. Where? Wherever you want. Online, dine-in, curbside, or carry-out. Like we said, Billy Sims knows barbecue. Thank you for your support. We love being a part of your community. We'll see you soon. All right. Did I just look all sorts of swollen today? And I feel like shit. Well, I didn't think it was the time to tell you on the air that, yeah, you don't look great. I don't feel good, man. I was saying, I'm sure you're not offended by me telling you that. No, I can feel it. Trust Dude, me. You, honestly, I think you know. I, like, I got my cane. I got my cane here. I walked upstairs, um, had to be about eight, eight, maybe a quarter to eight, just before, you know, 45 minutes before we were going on. And uh went to take a step, dude. And I couldn't walk. Like What? My right leg. Yeah, my gray, like in my groin, dude. Oh, Jesus. And I think it's, I think it's the same labrum that I had repaired in 2019. But I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. If I take a step, I'd go right down. So I stretched it all out, walked around with the cane for a few minutes, and then seemed to be okay. But we'll see what happens when I sit up. Well, so you take it slow, walk. dude. I don't know. It's just, it's just from all this weird shit that I'm doing, you know I mean? <clears throat> and all these medications that they keep changing on me. Well, you're, I'll tell you right now, dude, your cheeks are pretty red. And um, yeah, yeah, that's probably like sun. It could be, but yeah, you just like, dude, your eyes even. You look, I know it's probably exhaustion, but like, you look like you just, <laughs> you look, you just look, you, dude, you look tired. I think I need to go start smoking again. What, marijuana? Yeah, my eyelids are all burned too. I think it's from the sun. Probably. But, you're, probably are you dehy you're probably dehydrated. Could be. I don't know. I mean, I seem to drink enough fluid. Well, do you think, do you drink enough fluid besides water? Do you electrolyte yourself? I don't drink water. No? I don't drink water at all. I have one pop, probably 30 ounces of coffee, 24 ounces of tea. Used to drink a Gatorade every day. No water. Why do you not I drink my water? water? I, huh? Why do you not drink water? I just, I've never, ever, never have. How the fuck? You know what? You my mom's sister, my mom's sister does that. And it's always like, how do you not drink water? I don't. <laughs> well, I mean, you think about it. There's water and coffee. There's water and pop. There's water and tea. There's water and Gatorade. There's Powerade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what what I drink when I drink water, I put lemonade uh, lemonade in it. You know, like the yeah. little packets. Mm -hmm. So I will drink water, but it's flavored. I'm just I well, look. I'm, I'm just, weird. I'm just giving you shit. I'm just giving you no, shit. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine because I know that I should drink more water, but this is how stupid it is. If I go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. I will drink five glasses of water because I have a straw, ice, and lemon. Oh, so you just you'll drink it up like it's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Drink it up like it's nothing. But if I don't have those things, I do not drink water. Maybe I just need to get my ass to the store and buy some straws, some ice, and some lemon. <laughs> Maybe you do. <laughs> so, so you're so. In other words, you're quirky. You have your quirks about you. Yeah, like we all do. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. I good. don't know. I used to love drinking water, man. I, I used to drink a shit ton of it. I used to, I used to be that guy that would go to the gym with the, you know, the gallons of water. You know, I'd go to work with the gallons of water, but. I don't know. Yeah. Shit changed, I guess. 
<clears throat> well, shit happens, dude. It does. Uh, all right. Well, that was. Uh, why does it say live and recording? Is it still live? We're still live. 